Welcome to our brief presentation on tips for coding hand surgeries in ICD-10 PCS, presented by Haugen's Director of Clinical Integration, Ed O'Byrne. There are no CEUs offered with this presentation. If you are looking for education with CEUs, we encourage you to visit our online store for additional webinars and online courses. Let's hear from Ed. Hi there, welcome to a quick question and answer session on hand surgery and PCS. This follows the recent webinar I did on hand surgery coding and PCS, and I am Ed O'Byrne, the presenter, formerly a physician assistant, now a coding educator, and I'm currently the director of clinical integration for Haugen Consulting Group. Our first question is, how do you code a completion amputation, as we sometimes see documented, where the traumatic amputation of the finger is cut back further and then closed up? Well. It depends on how much tissue was removed, at what level, and ultimately how it's documented. If simply a rongeur is used to kind of snip the bone back, smooth it up, and the skin is closed over it, probably best coded as an excision of bone and a root operation repair of the skin. Now, if there is a documented formal amputation, uh, that is a shortening of the bone, cutting back of the tendons and the nerves, then followed by skin closure uh, with flaps or otherwise, a detachment root operation is probably more accurate if all of, the, again, the elements of a detachment or amputation are present. Next, we need to know which digit is involved in it, what level to do the PCS coding. So the digits are right here in the body part value. That's not hard to get from the documentation. And then we just need to know which level, whether it is a low, which is through the DIP joint or distally, mid through the PIP joint and the, or the middle phalanx, um, high through the proximal phalanx, and then complete through the metacarpophalangeal joint. This will determine your qualifier accordingly. You will never see a ray amputation in this um, circumstance. Typically, it will be a crush injury to the tip of the finger that's cut back to the distal interphalangeal joint and then closed up. And again, if the documentation supports an amputation, here is your detachment root operation for that completion amputation. Question number two, how would you code a high-pressure injection injury washout and debridement? of the finger. So a high pressure injection injury is where a paint gun or a, a grease gun or high pressure washer actually cuts a hole through the skin and then deposits a high pressure substance beneath the skin and subcutaneous tissue, unfortunately often in the hand, which can require opening up of the tissue to both clean out the substance and then to cut out any uh, devitalized tissue that is um, beneath that, that lest it become necrotic and infected. So how to code these depends on the circumstances. First, we're looking at um, probably a debridement of the damaged tissue, and I will tell you in the hand, it's almost always an excision, a very tedious and um, conservative debridement just of the tissue that's damaged and not anything more. It's not likely that you would have an extraction of this tissue, just a scraping out of the tissue, so mostly look for excision, but think about extraction. And then finally, which body layer? Um, I will tell you that in the hand, it's commonly the subcutaneous tissue and fascia PCS body system that is involved, but occasionally you'll see a tendon sheath or a bursa uh, that is involved by high pressure um, injection injury. So the body uh, part would uh, just depend on the documentation. And then because these are typically a single wound um, code to the deepest level of the debridement. Question number three, um, what is a filleted finger flap and how would you code it? Well, a filleted finger flap is a salvage procedure that uses the skin of a badly damaged digit to cover some adjacent tissue uh, somewhere else in the hand instead of just throwing the skin away because hand skin is, is in very short supply. So what's done is what you'd expect from a fillet is essentially the bones are taken out and then the skin that's left um, is used for the other graft. Um, so now this can be pedicled or it can be free and that will determine your coating. Uh, if the skin is simply moved to a different location on the hand, a replacement of skin would be your uh, root operation and your device, autologous tissue substitute. Now the preferable way to do it is with the flap still attached, and that counts as a transfer root operation, but of course it's got to still be attached. The nice thing is if it's still attached at its um, the base, it still has a vascular supply and will tend to heal better. So if this is a finger, imagine that's lost its uh, vitality, the bone and tendons and so forth are taken out and this remaining skin is flapped over this adjacent wound. That would make a transfer root operation. 
So we have the skin of the right or left hand. That part is pretty easy. External approach, it's always autologous tissue substitute because it's the patient's own skin and always full thickness. Now you will still have the remaining part of the finger, but it's hard to support coating a full detachment because we've just used the skin and possibly the subcutaneous tissue too. So at least consider coating a resection of the phalanx. If it's the whole thing, the proximal phalanx typically, occasionally at the middle phalanx, or if it's cut off somewhere in the middle of the phalanx, of course it will count as an excision. So that takes care of the fillet part and then the skin as we use for our replacement or transfer. So I hope that's been informative for you. This has been Ed O'Byrne with Haugen Consulting Group, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us. Make sure to subscribe to our blog and YouTube channel for additional free resources. We'll see you soon. Thank you.